Okay, fabulous. Bloody ho. So let's start off um, sitting. Let's grab my ball. Have a sit on the ball for me. And we're just going to do some of the little, the, sort of the warming up things that we did the other day. Just have a little, think about some spinal movement here. So we'll just pause for a moment and let Debbie just sort of get herself organized. All right. So just very simply, all we're going to start with, and I see that we already have an enthusiastic member. I was actually going to start off with Bouncing Penny, so you've, you've, you've reorganized my, <laughs> you've, you've preceded what I was going to do. It's exactly what I was going to do. So what I was going to do, Penny's already there for me, is just start off with a little bit of bouncing. So for some people, that can feel quite challenging from your pelvic floor. And if, if that's the sort of feeling that you have about bouncing, just remember your pelvic floor is more secure the more vertical your pelvis is. So if your pelvis is too tipped forwards or backwards, then your pelvic floor pressure isn't quite right. So just see if first of all, you can just get that feeling of verticalness. And if that's fine, then you can give yourself bigger bounces. And I seem to be losing my head at the top of the screen. Never mind. Beautiful, very nice. Just trying to let your arms be relaxed. Just learning your spine, bounce, just noticing that you have this lovely upright pelvis. Now, can you keep that going and give me an arm swing as if we're sort of walking very briskly down the road? And can you coordinate a bit of arm with the movement of your body? Nice, very good. Lovely, just keep that going. So we're doing arm swing and bounce. Keep that going and are you breathing? Are you breathing gently? Is your head nicely centered or is it sort of bouncing around off to one side? Beautiful, let's just do one more there. Lovely, and then just gradually zone that down a bit. Good, really nice. Now let's warm up a little bit of circling of the pelvis, so take your feet a little apart. Again, not particularly with any sort of idea in mind, just easily let your pelvis circle. It's as if your pelvis was a big ball and it's just rotating around, going to the side, to the back, to the other side, to the front, very smooth. Try not to feel that there's any sort of compression or tightness or jamming anywhere around your lower back, very easy. Lovely, and then gently let's go back the other way. And just notice how that feels, you know, can you transfer your weight from one side of your pelvis to the other? Can you bring it forward? Can you bring it back? Now, we're gonna go back around that first direction again and see if we can improve on that. So come back into the center again. You just have your hands across your shoulders. Hi, Enrico. Let the tops of your shoulders relax, chest is still. Now, come back to doing the circles again. Can you isolate it? If you can see yourself in that little box that is you on the screen, can you check out your head and shoulders? Can you give me a big circle with your pelvis, but don't move your head, neck and shoulders? Just see if you can watch that. Can you give me a bigger circle? Remember, we're trying not to tighten the lower back though. Very nice. Okay, and reverse. Can you keep your head, neck and shoulders completely still? Beautiful, really isolating the movement around your waist. Fantastic. One more there. Beautiful, back into the center and forward. You stay where you are, I'm just gonna sit side on for you. Interlink, interlacing your fingers and then turning your palms so they face forward in that direction. Push your palms forward, draw your waist backwards. Now let's stay here and again, think about what we thought about the other day. This is this opposing forces. Can you deliver your arms as far forwards as possible and draw your waist as far backwards as you can? Stay there. Have a think, what happens to your the tops of your shoulders when you do that? You want your shoulder blades to feel like they're wide rather than elevated. Then come back to vertical, interlace your fingers behind the back of your pelvis and push them down as far as you can into the ball and let the top of your chest and your head lift. Um, stay there for a moment. And again, notice that it's not sort of crunchy in your lower back. It's lifted in your chest that you're after. Collarbones are wide, arms are pressing down. 
and back to the middle. Let's do it again. Interlace your fingers, press them forward. Shoulder blades are wide, draw the back of your ribs backwards as your arms go forward. Try and make it equal. It's not just your arms going forward. Nice, it's your waist pulling backward as much as the arms go forward, back of the neck is long. Come back into the center, hands behind your pelvis. Push your hands down as hard as you can, shoulder blades down, chest up, head up. Now stay there for a minute. If it works for your shoulders, can you just give me a little lift of your arms? If that's just horrendous, just don't do that bit, obviously. So if you've got your hands slightly lifted, can you push them away from you a little bit more? So if you could touch the floor behind you. And then again, just lift your chest a little bit higher. And then uh, relax, just pause for a second. I'm gonna sit and face you for a minute. Now let's get some sideways movement going. So your legs are parallel in front of you. Place your left hand on the ball and press it into the ball. So imagine that you've got paint on your hand and you're trying to give yourself a really good painty imprint on the ball on that side. Keep that pressure, bring the other arm up. Start to side bend towards that left arm. I'm, what I'm doing with my fingers is I'm walking them down the ball. So I'm making little painty fingerprints down the ball. Keep going, keep doing painty fingerprints down. Stay there. Now, once again, press your hand into the ball a bit more as if you're trying to push the ball out from underneath you. Nice, very good. And then come back up. Let's do the other side. So before we side bend, put your right hand on the ball and then press it into the ball very hard. Bring your other arm up. Keep the pressure with your right hand on the ball and walk your little painty fingerprints down the ball as if you were trying to pull yourself over. And it's an up and over feeling with your ribs. When you've gone to what feels right for you, make sure your head is traveling with you, by the way. Lovely. Now imprint that hand into the ball a bit more while still pushing up and away with your left arm. Nice work. And back up, we'll do that one more time. Press your hand as hard as you can to the ball, other arm up. Keep the hand pressure, walking down. Use your hands to pull you down whilst also pushing up and away with the other arm. Stay, imprint your hand, stay and reach. Stay, think about your tailbone pushing down into the ball as your head pushes up and away. Stay, could you push your tailbone more down into the ball and pull your head up and away a bit more? Still pressing your left hand into the ball. Fantastic work. Beautiful, one more the other side. So let's start with the imprinting hand, press it down, other arm up. Walk it down, so pull yourself down over the ball with that right hand, fantastic. Let your head go with you, beautiful. Now let's stay here for a minute to think this through. So I want my right hand pressing into the ball, left arm up and away, now push your tail down into the ball and feel your head pulling away from your tail. Good, so if you can get all those different directions, hand push into the ball, other arm up and away, tail pushing down, head pulling up and away, fantastic. And center, okay, let's get that force going with rotation. Can you take your right hand and press it against this knee? Now, the pressure, pressure of your hand is this way, push your knee against it. So you've got a lock between your hand and your knee, wonderful. Other hand behind you, press that into the surface of the ball. Push with both of your hands, lift your spine and turn. Stay there, your head will be turning away from me right now. Now notice your right hand on your knee. Can you make sure that your knee is pushing against your hand as much as your hand is pushing into your knee? Stay there. Could you drop your shoulder blades and lift your chest a little bit more? And then center, wonderful. Let's go the other way. So make a block between your hand and your knee. Press the knee to the hand, excellent. Other hand behind you. Turn your head, turn your chest. Stay there again, thinking about that right knee, really feel how it presses out against your hand and how your hand presses hard against the knee. Lovely, back into the center, do one more twist. Let's go around to our first side, get the pressure on the hand and the knee, spin your ribs, turn your head, keep the arm pressure, keep the shoulders down. Amazing, and one last one going back the other way. Hand pressure, turning. Beautiful, keep the knee and the hand pressing, turning your head. 
Lovely. And back again to the center. Beautiful. We're going to do our little side saddles and improve on these from the other day. So if you move the ball slightly so it's underneath your left buttock cheek, and then your right leg will be behind you. If I go side on, my right knee is bent. So this is sort of the same position that you could do on the floor. You could have been kneeling on this knee with your leg in the front. It's exactly the same shape. So we're just going to stay here and improve on this for a minute. So I've got my back knee bent, my front knee bent. Now, if you think about this hip here, this right side of your pelvis, what tends to happen as soon as we take the leg behind us is this whole half of the pelvis rolls that way. Can you rotate your pelvis and your thigh muscle forward? So your kneecap is pointing at the floor, not sticking out to the side. So if you can get that. So that if I direct it with my hand, I'm directing the flesh of my thigh around and in towards the ball. That's inward rotation. Now I'm gonna look down at the front of my pelvis and this side here, which is your right hand side, can you square that forward a bit more? Pull this side a little more forward. Nice, very good. Draw your belly in and up. Stay there. Pelvis is square. Flesh on this right thigh is wrapping inwards. Good. Now, could you put your left hand on the ball and take your right arm up by your ear and remember how you did your side bend. Press your hand into the ball, other arm up and over. So use the same technique you used a minute ago. Stay there, you've got lots of things to think about. Pelvis is square to the front. Flesh on the right thigh is rotating inwards. Your kneecap is pointing down and your side bending, amazing. Lovely and relax. All right, let's see if we can put all of those bits and pieces on the other side. So first of all, take a moment to organize ourselves here. So I'm just sort of perched on this right sitting bone here. So first of all, the leg that's behind you, your knee is bent. Sort of like I'm in a half kneeling position here with the ball in the way. Now the flesh on this thigh, think of it wrapping inwards. So your knee turns straight forward. Now check out your pelvis. This half of your pelvis will be opening out this way. So can you draw it forward a bit more? Pelvis is forward, thigh muscle is wrapped in. Nice, so your pelvis is as square to the front as you can make it. Lovely, stay there, lift the abdominals. Hand on the ball, other arm up by your ear. Nice work, use the hand pressure on the ball. That's the same as we did before. And side bend, lovely. Stay there, keep the pressure of your right hand on the ball. Rib cage is lifted. Really noticing that perfect alignment of that left leg. Fantastic work. Beautiful. Give that one a break for a minute. Stay sitting on the ball. Now, this is not a buttock stretch. This is your ability to sit squarely on your two sitting bones, but there is balance involved. So let's plan this out to start with. So this left foot of yours, can you just take it off the floor and balance it on your right foot? So it's, it's just balancing over here somewhere. Now, what can possibly happen at this point? Can you see my pelvis is shooting off to this left-hand side? Can you just stay there and make sure that your pelvis is actually centered over your right leg? So you see what I'm doing is I'm slightly shifting my pelvis across. So I'm actually on that hip. Let's just check that out the other side. Just balance your right foot on top of your left. Does your pelvis scoot to one side or the other. And you make sure your weight is actually centered on that right hip. Nice. Very good, pop that leg down. Now you could do that again if you find that this next position is difficult. So what I'm gonna get you to do if you're comfortable with it is lift your left ankle and place it on your right knee. If that's difficult, you can just have your leg down here again. It comes to the same thing. We're not doing this for a stretch, we're doing this for balance. Now, stay there for a minute. So quite possibly, because you've got this left leg up, your pelvis could be shooting off in that same direction. Can you just take a moment to shift your pelvis a little bit more towards the right? So you truly are on top of that leg. Nice, just feel that balance. Feel that height in your spine. 
Beautiful, very nice. You've got your weight shifted across on top of that right hip. Fantastic. All right, let's check it out on the other side. So first of all, cross your leg over. Have you shot off to the right or the left? You could, to be fair, you could have gone either way. Think about this leg that you're on, which is your right hip. Sorry, left hip for you. Think about being in that left hip. So maybe you also need to angle your sit bone down. Are you on the sit bone? Are you securely on that hip? Good, very nice. Feel that centering on top of the hip. Beautiful, very nice, well done. Now we're gonna bring that down. Now, if again, if that's enough of a challenge to work on that, you don't need to add on the next part, which is spine rotation. You might just want to stay with that. So we're going back to the first leg again. So you're crossing your left leg over. Just maybe just for a moment here, can you just shimmy your pelvis side to side? And then stop when you feel you are in fact balanced correctly on top of that right leg. If that's enough of a challenge, you stay there. Otherwise, what happens when you turn your ribs? Can you still remain centered on your pelvis? Your goal is to be able to keep the pelvis still and just move the rib cage. So for some people, turning the head makes it ridiculously difficult. So if it's easier for you, keep your head looking straight ahead and just turn the ribs. If you feel you've got that, it's harder if you turn your head as well. Nice, your goal is to stay centered over that right leg. Just give me one more each side or just be doing the balance, whatever works for you. Fabulous, all right, now let's see how that compares to the other side. So don't rush it, let's cross the leg over first. Let's do a little bit of a side to side movement of your pelvis. Okay, feel anchored down on top of that left hip. If that's enough for you, you just stay there. Otherwise, see if you can add a little bit of upper body rotation. Good. The purpose of the exercise is to stay solidly down on top of that left hip socket, that left buttock. Yeah, really nice. And again, you'll notice that one side is a little trickier than the other. Beautiful, gentle spinning of your ribs. Nice work. One more there, gentle spin. Beautiful. And relax, very good, lovely work. Now, we need a wall because we're gonna do some wall squats. So if I turn my screen around, I have a wall over here. So you could close your door as long as it's um, obviously a secure door that you're not gonna go barging through. Um, see if you can find a bit of wall that you can put your ball against. So I've got my ball. Up against the wall here, and you're just going to lean into it. I'll just wait for you all to find something. So a door would work as well. Sorry, I know sometimes it's quite tricky to find a bit of wall. Oh, that's good, you've all found a bit of wall. Well done, fantastic. So first of all, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my feet forward a little bit, and I'm going to try to find a straight position. So I'm, I want to be a straight plank, but you can see I'm on, slightly on a back diagonal here. So can you put your hands one in the front of your pelvis and one in the back? Give me a little tuck under, give me a little arch. So when you tuck under, you'll feel that there's a gripping in your front. When you arch, you'll feel there's a gripping in your back. Now, can you find something midway between those two? So for pretty much all of you, what that will mean is you have to work to keep the front of your pelvis lifted. So keep that engaged and don't lose it. We're going to do some little upper back movements. This part of your pelvis is your fixed point. It doesn't move. Can you bring your hands behind your head? Without moving your pelvis, can you lift your chest, lift your collarbones, lift your head and extend your upper back so you're looking at the ceiling. Then come back to a straight line. Now, without moving your pelvis, can you press the bottom of the rib cage back into the ball and curl forward? You haven't curled your tail, you've just curled your upper back. Fantastic. Come back to straight. Here we go again. Lifting up and back over the ball without moving the pelvis. Push the bottom of the ribs back into the ball to curl forward. 
keep going. If you were with me in the foam roller class the other day, this is exactly what we were doing on the foam roller. We were doing this little forward curve by pushing the back of the ribs in. Give me one more of those. Your pelvis is your fixed point, just moving the top of the spine. Last one, curl it forward. Then come back to somewhere in the center, let your arms relax. Now remember that shape of your pelvis, but change your leg position. Can you bring your feet directly underneath your pelvis so you're standing absolutely perpendicular? So remember when you did that little arch with the top of the chest, just maintain a little bit of that so you're not collapsing with the top of your chest and the back of your ribs are pushing into the ball. Now, this, what we're going to be doing is our feet stay underneath us, but they're going to go out wide. So the placement of your feet is nice and wide. If you're a ballet person, that's second position in ballet. So my toes are turned out, my knees are turned out. Now, can you just put your hands in the front and back of your pelvis again? Just do a tuck under and do an arch. Just do tuck under an arch and just sort of wiggle around a bit until you can find where your neutral is. Now, without changing that, maybe keep your hands here for a minute. Can you bend your knees and push them out over your little toes? Keep bending them, keep pushing them out over your little toes. Now to come back up, thrust your feet down into the floor. So two things, you're, well, three things, sorry. First of all, keep your chest lifted. Second, keep your pelvis vertical so it doesn't tuck, it doesn't arch. Third, when I'm pushing up, I'm really thinking of my feet pushing down. If you just think about straightening your knees, it's a lot of stress on the knee joint. So you sit down into your pelvis, really trying to open out these groin muscles. When you come up, press through your feet. Now let's keep that going and keep that little bit of lift in the top of your chest. The whole time, press through your feet, lovely. I'm imagining that the outlet of my pelvis is pointing straight at the ground and it remains pointing straight at the ground when I'm all the way down and it stays there as I press back up. Good, knees are going wide over your little toes. Press back up, we've just got one more of these. Pelvis is pointing straight down, knees are wide. And press to come back up. Beautiful, change of position. So you're going into a first position in ballet, which is heels together, toes apart. So side on, I still have my feet as much as I can directly under my hip sockets. So the first thing to do in this position is to try to feel that your inside thigh muscles can engage without too much buttock clenching. So let's just stay here and consider this for a minute. So I'm trying to press my inner thighs together and slightly relax my buttocks. My reason for saying that is sometimes we get weak in the inner thigh and overly clenchy in the buttocks, pelvis is vertical. Okay, knees are going wide. Now, the moment you feel your heels are gonna lift or your pelvis changes position, you stop, press through your feet as your legs straighten, squeeze with your inner thighs, but try to keep your buttocks slightly Slightly switched off, they have to do a little bit. Down, play your buttocks, up, play your inner thighs. Backs of the inner thighs, can you press them together when you're vertical? Nice work. Chest is slightly lifted, pelvis is in neutral. Squeeze the back of the inner thighs so you can get rid of the gap there, lovely. Press your knees wide, lovely. As you come up, Press the back of the inside thighs together, chest stays slightly lifted. Just do one more. Beautiful. Press the back of the thigh together. Good, stay here. I've still got the back of my thighs pressed together. My pelvis is still lifted and I'm just raising my heels. And then I'm lowering my heels. And then I'm gonna do it again. I'm keeping the front of the pelvis lifted. Every time I lower my heels, the back of my inner thighs draw together again. Good, lift your heels, trying to feel pressure on all five toes. Bring it down. Nice, one more of those. All five toes, pelvis is vertical, press down. Good, beautiful, really nice. Let's just dismantle ourselves from there for a minute and we're coming back to the mat and I'm just gonna 
turn myself around and face you. Okay, so let's do a little bit of development on our plank position. So let's get the forearm plank going again to start with, and then we're coming into a full plank, if that's appropriate for you. What I did the other day, and I'll just remind you of it, um, a lot of the work we did just there was about keeping straight. So this is straight. Armpit to hip to knee. So if you can envisage this straight line when we come forward into our little forearm position. So lock that in mind. Hands on the ball. So let's me look at this first position that you all know about. So we're straight. We know how to do that. So I think everybody's done this one before. So let your pelvis come forward at the same rate as your shoulders. Nice, stay there. Now, very commonly, we try to control that with the hamstrings. So could you press your shins into the floor? Nice. Now press through your arms to bring yourself back up. If you feel your feet wanting to lift, what you're trying to do is trying to control the downward movement of your hamstrings. So can you imprint your shin bones? Okay, that all look great, by the way. Keep it straight, here we go again. Slowly let your elbows bend. That's your triceps supporting you. Nice work on the way back up. I'm pressing my shins slightly into the floor, bringing myself up straight. Let's just do one more of this version. Keep your chest slightly lifted. Hopefully you don't collapse your chest halfway there. Yeah, nice work. Press to come back up. You've all got that beautifully. Now, if that's sufficient challenge for you, you stay there. What we're going to do next is going to go down into our little plank, and then we're going to take one leg at a time straight. So we'll end up in a, in a proper forearm plank. But we're just going to do it slow, just to make sure you don't lose that positioning. All right, so first of all, just take it forward, do exactly what you just did. And if it doesn't work for you to do the next bit, you can just carry on going up and down there. If you're following me, you're going to tuck your toes underneath you and you're going to push backwards with your heels, lift your knees. Are you still straight? Fantastic work. Lift your belly, draw your ribs up, lower your knees, flatten your feet, press back up. That bit where you do the plank, the most likely thing that's going to happen is your ribs are going to suddenly fall forward. Um, I don't think anybody's did actually, that looked good. So let's do it again. Take it slow. So you come forward, forearms, toes, press back with your heels, drop your knees, flatten your feet, press through the back of your arms, use your lats and triceps. Nice, and again, bring it forward, hold, tuck, heels, perfect plank, stay, knees, feet, back of arms and lats. Good, let's do two more of those. If you feel that you just want to do the kneeling one, you just do that, remember? Yeah, tuck, press back. Feel like you're doing calf stretch, nice work. Drop it down, flatten your feet, press through the back of your arms, use your triceps, try not to buckle in the center. This is your last one, very good. Are you breathing? Sure you are. Here, tuck, keep your body ramrod straight. Nice. Drop it down. Feet, you're still ramrod straight. Use your arms. That was your last one. Ta -da! Very good. That was beautiful. Okay, we're going to do a little bit in line. So have a lay down. And you're just going to have your legs over the ball. We're actually going to do some chest curls. And something else. But we'll come to the something else in a moment. So just in line, it's very easy to get good posture in line because gravity is doing it for you. So just notice that your pelvis is very heavy and relaxed. So we're doing a chest curl. So you know how to do this. You know it's the back of the ribs pushing into the floor. So hands behind your head and just point your elbows slightly up to the ceiling. Nice. So when you curl forward, remember it's pressing the back of the ribs into the floor rather than pulling your face forwards. And once you're there, stay there. Stay there. Can you still breathe? Can you feel like you press the back of the ribs into the floor a little bit more and that will lift you a little higher? Stay there. There's ease in your throat and effort in your abdominals. Nice. And down. Okay, so let's do that again. Press into the back of the ribs. 
Lift your chest, take it slow. Really feel the bend of your upper back. Slow, slow, slow. And then back down again. Next time we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go off on a diagonal. So can you keep your right hand behind your head and have your left hand at the ready to press against that opposite knee? So doing the same thing, but now we're heading up on the diagonal to the outside of the knee, do exactly what you just did. Exhale, press the bottom of the ribs in. Now keep coming up. What I'm trying to do is aim my fingers to the outside of my right knee and then press those together. I'm looking at my hand on the outside of my knee and then we'll come back down. We're gonna do that twice more on that same side. So here we go again, exhale, back of the ribs, press into the floor, inchworm your fingers up and out to the outside of your knee, press it together and inhale to come back down. Nice work, one more, nice and slow, inchworm it up, stay there, press hand and knee together and smoothly back down, glorious. Okay, let's do three of those on the other side. So hand on the opposite knee, obviously. Here we go, take your time. Exhale, coming up, fingertips are sliding to the outside of your left knee, press the two together, and then inhale to come back down. Lovely, two more. Exhale, slide up, press fingertips and knee together, lock the whole system up, and inhale back down. And let's do one more here. Exhale, slide it all the way up, slide, 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 slide. And inhale back down. Beautiful, let your head relax for a minute. And we're just going to do sort of a similar exercise, but with moving legs. So can you put your feet on top of the ball, your knees are bent. Now, you may need to adjust your feet once we get going, we'll just sort of see where we end up. So can you keep your left foot on the ball exactly where it is and just take your right foot off so it's only one leg. So move the ball away, just with the left leg. Bring it in, put your right foot on the ball, and then just do the same with the right leg. So it's sort of like you're walking, really. So alternating your legs. That's it. So just alternating, beautiful, very nice. We're gonna add the chest curl to this in a minute. So I'm just doing one leg and then the other leg. Your pelvis isn't moving. The leg that's bent almost feels like it pulls into you as the other leg stretches away. So just if you can get that opposition movement, if I push away with one, I pull in with the other. It's like pulling a bow, pull in with one while you stretch the other. Yeah, that's better. Pull in with one while you stretch the other. Okay, hold that thought. If that's sufficient for you, you could just stay with that. Um, the other thing you could do if you don't want to lift your chest is you could just touch the knee with your opposite hand. Let's just all do that, just so we know what we're about to do. So one knee pulls in, just put your hand on it, stretch the other leg out. Just alternate it. This is the movement we're gonna do, which is gonna be harder in a minute. So you're just putting your hand on the knee that bends in, your pelvis is still. Okay, fairly straightforward. Lovely. Okay, log pad. So you could just stay doing that. Otherwise, remember how you do your chest curl, back of the ribs pressed into the floor, curl your chest, forward, I'm now looking directly at the ball. I'm trying to get loads of height by bending my rib cage. Now, whichever leg is pushing the ball away, so I'm going to push away with my right foot and I'm turning my right elbow up towards my left knee. It's the crisscross. That was my exhale. Exhale, twist, elbow to knee. Can you touch the two together? Inhale, center. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, center. Keep it going. Your pelvis isn't moving. You're getting an up and around movement with your rib cage. Good. Now let's get better at the breath. Can you breathe out? Feel you wring the air out of your lungs as you twist. Nice. Exhaling to push it away. Inhaling to bring it in. Let's do one more each side. Big spin around with your ribs. Lovely. The last one. Spin it around, squeeze the air out. Fabulous. And take a break for a minute. Put your legs back over the ball again. Okay, so we're going to do some bridging in this position now. So we've got our calves on the ball and we're quite sort of relaxed on the floor. 
So the ball is quite close in for this particular version of bridging, which becomes um, a little trickier in a moment. Arms down on the floor, connect your abdominals, press into your legs, lift your hips, and then push your legs away from you. So your bottom is now off the floor. Okay, we're very familiar with this. Connect your abdominals, lower yourself back down, bend your knees. So it's a very sort of easy bridge because you've got lots of support with your legs. Just go for that again. Connect your abdominals, lift your hips, press your legs away. And then you just reverse it again. Legs coming in, abdominals connecting, lowering back down. If that's sufficient for you, that's what you're going to do. If you're comfortable with it, we're going to do that as a single leg bridge. It's a little tricky to, to stick it to get going, but it, you'll improve on it. I've just taken my right leg off the ball. It's sort of hovering around in the air. You can bend it in towards you a little bit more, just keeping it out of the way, all right? Your right leg is doing nothing. Apart from that, same exercise, only with your left leg. Connect your abdominals, lift up, push, reconnect, lower. It's your hamstring and buttock of your left leg. Do that again. We're going to do three. Exhale, little inhale at the top. Exhale, lower it down. One more, check out your pelvis is level. Exhale, lift it up, try not to twist the pelvis, lift up high, and then exhale to come back down. Beautiful, let's check out the other side. So before you go, just take a moment, level pelvis, back of the ribs heavy. Here we go, as we exhale, lift, press away, use that right leg, and then exhaling to come back down. Good, just a little lift, two more of those. Exhale, use your leg and lift. That's your right buttock and hamstring, beautiful. And inhale down. Nice, we've just got one more of these. And exhale and lift. Beautiful. And inhale and down. Remember that exercise, you may decide to go back to it as I make this a little trickier. Okay, can you take the ball distant from you so your feet are under the, sorry, feet are on top of the ball, not under it, <laughs> that'd be weird. So your legs are out straight. We're not gonna do bridging for a moment. We're just gonna prepare our little split position and then we'll, we'll get all fancy in a moment. So pressing down as hard as you can with your left leg, bring your right leg up towards you, maybe just give it a pull towards you. And let's just take a little, little moment alone with our hamstrings here. Just stay there. Just let your hamstring muscle lengthen a little bit. So remember in this position, we've got that feeling of opposition. One leg's pushing down, one leg's pulling up. Make sure the leg on the ball is actually pushing down while you pull the other one up, just getting this split position. Fabulous, lower that one down. Okay, let's just do one of those on the other side. Press down with the right leg, up with the left. And see if you can get that beautiful big split position. Really just taking the time just to let your hamstring elongate a little bit. Nice work, very good. And let's bring that down. Now, rather than having our ankles on the ball, can you bring the ball just a little further in so it's just under your calf? That, that will stop your knee feeling quite so challenged. So the exercise is going to be going up into a bridge with our legs here, and then we're gonna see if we can do that split again. You may decide you prefer to do it just exactly as the way we just did. So if you would prefer, do the same exercise we just did. If you're happy to give a go with bridging, let's give it a go. I press my feet hard into the ball and my hips have lifted, and then you're just gonna stay there. Lock the ribs, lock the belly. Push as hard as you can down with your left leg to bring your right leg towards your face. Nice. Bring that right leg down, park your right leg on the ball, press it as hard as you can down, up goes your left, press the back of the shoulders into the floor. Nice, bring it down, we're about to come down from our bridge, draw the back of the ribs, connect the abdominals, lower yourself back down, only one on each leg, otherwise you'll start to, um, your quality will go rapidly. Okay, just lower it down. All right, here we go again. Press the ball away, stay, buttocks, abdominals, right leg, pull it up, Bring it down, back of the shoulders anchored, left leg, bring it up, bring it down. Pause, take a little inhale, lower your bridge, scoop your belly. Nice work, very good. And again, here we go. Exhale, press into the back of the shoulders, engage the abdominals, pull your leg towards you. 
bring it down, back of the shoulders, abdominals, pull it back up, lower it down, nice, scoop the abdominals and lower, we're doing one more, here we go, last time, exhale, press the legs away, scoop the abdominals, shoulders are back, and leg up, leg down, very strong, beautifully elongated leg, nice, bring it down, scoop the belly, and roll your way back down again. Good, really nice. Just bring the ball in towards you. Just take it with your hands there for a minute. Nice, very good. Just park the ball on your knees for a minute. Um, I'm just gonna sort of revisit something that we did the other day. So we've got the ball on our knees and we're going to do, again, one more abdominal one. We'll just sort of plan this out before we start. I've got the ball balanced on my left knee. I've got my right hand on the ball. I'm locking those two together and really feeling that connection. I'm just going to free up my right leg. Here it is off the floor. I'm going to stretch it away. I'm going to bring it back in. I'm just going to do that two more times. Keep your hand, the ball, and your knee connected. And then one more of those. This is our little warm up movement. Place it back down. Nice. Let's do three on the other side. Hand, knee, ball, all squeezed together. And here we go. Leg travels out, leg travels in, and with breath, exhale, inhale, beautiful, one more, exhale, inhale, very nice. Now this time we're going to do it in tabletop, you might prefer to do exactly what we just did again, you don't have to do this version, either, either do what we just did or can you lift your left foot up. Now stay there for a minute, really feeling that you have a connection, hand, ball and knee, Lock it together. Draw your abdominals tight. We've got three movements of the right leg. Exhale. Inhale. Don't touch it down this time. Exhale. Inhale. I'm just bumping my knee to the ball. One more. Exhale. Inhale. Drop it down. Lovely. Feet down. Swap it over. Get the ball squashed into your knee. Scoop your abdominals. Bring that right leg up. Here we go. Three on the left leg. Exhale. Inhale, just touch your knee. Exhale. Inhale, touch your knee. One more. Exhale. Inhale, touch your knee. Beautiful. Bring everything down. Nice work. Really good. Let's come out of there for a minute. Rolling poly onto your side. Just have the ball in front of you. I'm just going to do a few little cat stretches just to release any tightness you may have got in your back from doing those. And the ball is in front of you. You're in a beautiful long straight line. Abdominals lifted, ribs drawing back. Nice and smooth. Exhale, scoop your belly, draw the back of the ribs towards the wall behind you. Continue to exhale until the ball is pushed forward and your hips are behind you. Stay. Take a breath in. And breathe out, lift your waist, draw the back of the ribs towards the wall behind you, push your hips forward. Shoulders are down, inhale, and again, exhale, scoop your abdominals, open up the muscles down the back of your spine, lengthen, stay, inhale, exhale, lengthen the muscles of your back, scoop your abdominals, pelvis comes forward, shoulders are down, let's do one more, inhale, and last time, exhale, scoop the abdominals, reach, inhale, and last time, exhale, scoop, hips forward, shoulders down, chest up. Good, really lovely. Okay, so now we're looking a little bit of work on our side. So if you bring the ball to your right hand side, so we're all going the same direction. Um, so this is, um, again, sort of similar to what we did on Tuesday, but not quite. So the start position is you're going to bring your left leg forward and we're going to be leaning over the ball and we're just going to do a few movements backwards and forwards. So just let's plan this out. I've got the ball attached to my hip. I'm going to push off this foot and my knee. And as I do that, what happens is I start to sort of travel over the ball. I've just positioned my back foot on the floor there. And I'm just going to go into a side bend. So that's where we're going to end up. We're just going to come in and out of this position in a moment. 
So both of your feet are anchored, not too wide apart, not too narrow, because what you're going to now do, let's see if you can coordinate this, is I'm bending both of my knees and I come back. I've got my toes still tucked under at the back. I come back to here, just bring your hand to the knee, push off both of your legs, squeeze your inner thighs, stretch. Bend your knees. The knees go wide, just tuck your hand. Good. Now, what tends to happen is, let me just show you what tends to happen, is the head leads it. That's my neck lifting up. Can you lead all of this movement by pushing with your legs and bending your spine? Bend your knees and come back down. Press with your legs and go back over. Good. Use your legs to get you there. Very nice, beautiful. Next time you go over, stay. Pause, good, keep that reach. Now we've currently got our left leg in the front. I hope you can feel that. So what you're going to do is you're gonna keep the reach through this top arm and you're just gonna rotate around and you should find that you end up on your stomach and you could reach both your arms in front of you. I've got my toes tucked underneath. So can you go to that position? Both of your arms are stretched out. Can you lift them off the floor? Scoop your middle. And stretch both of your arms towards the wall in front of you. That's it. Yeah. Push your weight slightly back into your toes. Otherwise, you'll launch. Does it push back into your heels a bit more? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Now, swivel. Come back to where you were. Give me the side bend. Push the ball forward with the underneath side of your pelvis. Keep twisting, 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 twisting. And bend your knees to come back to where you were. All right, let's see if we can get that movement again. All right, so here you go. First of all, pushing off both of your legs. Give me a beautiful big side bend. Park yourself there. Nice. Now swivel around. Can you come into a straight line? Stretch both of your arms. Yeah, we got it, very nice. Turn it around. Think of your underneath half of your pelvis pulling you around. Find your side bend, open it up. Bend both of your knees, come back to where you were. Yeah, amazing. Can you just give me one more of those? Press up two legs. Big side bend. Open it out, nice. Swivel around, stretch your arms. Let's see if we can just get this position. This is our last one, a little bit better. I've got two legs straight. Scooping your belly, reach with your arms. Without cramping your back, could you lift your arms a little higher? Nice, this is not easy to do. Without cramping your back, could you lift your chest a little higher? Yeah, nice, just do what you can with that, wonderful. And let's bring it back round again. Swivel, pull your underneath hip underneath you, side bend. And let's bend the knees and come back to where we started from and elegantly arise. Very good, that's quite a challenging position at that last one when you're all the way around on your front. I'm sure you sort of figure that out. Okay, so let's go to the other side. So, pause there. Beautiful, so the leg furthest away comes forwards. Yeah, very nice. And we're starting off just leaning over the ball, bringing the hand down. Both legs straight, just bring that top arm over. Let's just, just hang around here just for a moment. The beautiful big opening feeling through the side. Lovely, and just make sure the ball is positioned somewhere where you feel comfy. Okay, so our first coordination is, could you bend both of your knees, bring your hand down towards that top knee. I'm still leaning on the ball, lovely. And then back up and over again, make it silky smooth. Push through your legs, open out your arm. Good, beautiful, smooth side bend, like a lovely well-oiled machine. Good, nice. And again, reach up and over, stretch. Nice work, smoothly back down. Good, very nice. And again. Up and over this time, you get to stay there. Okay, pause. All right, let's see if you can figure this out. 
So one of your challenges is to actually be able to control your pelvis. Can you move the left half of your pelvis back away from me? Swivel around until your belly is on the ball. Your toes are still tucked underneath you. Now straighten your arms. Make sure the abdominals are still in support. Lift your chest. And reverse it. Bring that left hand back down. Bring the left half of your pelvis underneath you. That will make you twist back into your side bend. Rebend both of your knees and come back to where you were. Lovely, we'll do that two more times. Good. Just really exploring how well you can control movement here. Up and over into your side bend. There it is, it's your side bend. Nice. Now turn from your pelvis. See if you can swivel. If it's too much for you to lift your arms and chest, don't worry about that bit. So come onto your front. If you can do it, get your arms high, abdominals on, chest up if that works for you. And let's bring it all down. Side bend, leg swivel. Nice. Bend the knees, bring it down. Lovely. Okay, one last one. Give me a side bend. Let's just stay in your side bend for a minute. Just check out that that's somewhere you feel confident that you've got that. Smoothly transition it around. Keep going until your belly is on the ball, your legs are straight, your toes are tucked underneath you. Now, if it works for you, arms up, chest up, beautiful long straight spine, strengthening your back muscles. And then grand finale, side bend. There it is, beautiful. Knees. And with grace, style and elegance, up we come. Yeah, beautiful, very nice. Let's come into standing. Arise, let me just angle this up a teeny bit. Let's do a little bit of our balance work. So what we're gonna do in a moment is stand with one foot on the ball. So as usual, if you know balance is difficult for you, make sure you've got something nearby. So you stay where you are. I just want to talk you through just a positioning thing. My trusty stick here. So you can see that my hip is lined up over my foot if I do that. If I'm a bit weak in my hip muscles, what happens is I raise one leg and my hip starts to slide. Can you see it's like slipped off to the side? It's like my hip is really big. So your goal is to center on top of your hip joint. So you want to feel that you can actually get that angle. So can we all just first of all stand on our left leg and just have the ball in front of us here? And you're just going to stay there. I'm just going to come and peer for a minute. Okay, so what I want you all to think about is that alignment of your standing legs. So see if you can have the ball so it's going to, it's about to come straight forwards. And think about where that left hip is. Nice positioning, guys. That's lovely. It's sometimes hard to tell on yourself the positioning, but I think you look about right there. So put your hand on the outside of that hip, feel your buttock engage. Now, just move the ball backwards and forwards and really notice how well you maintain center on that hip. Now, you can go faster, which is what I'm doing, or you can take it slow. Good. Really feeling how that left buttock is holding you. Your chest is lifted, your head is centered. Nice. Now, that same movement, if you can do it without taking your foot off, can you adjust the ball so it's out to the side? So my knee is pointing out sideways. Now, where's this hip? You see it could be out here now. Tuck that hip back in, use that buttock. Now, in and out to the side. If this was a clock face, that's heading towards the three o'clock direction. Good, is your pelvis still square? Is your buttock tucked in? Chest lifted, head on the top, very nice work. Couple more of those, beautiful. Lovely. Now, let's check out the other side. So let's see if you can just get your left foot on. I just want to give you a second just to really think about this centering. So there's a straight line through here. So your right buttock should be firing up right now to hold that hip in so you can't fall out to the side. Yeah, that looks lovely. Okay, now where you go. This is just a straightforward one. So if this is a clock, this is going at 12 o'clock. Nice. So your important point here, pelvis is lifted, 
chest is straight, but it's this beautiful stability that you're getting through your standing hip. Nice work, feeling super solid through your middle. Lovely, now let's take that out at an angle. So walk the ball around, point your toes out, you're heading off vaguely in the direction of three. Now, what's happened to this hip here? Are you still stabilizing? Can you still feel your buttock holding? Is your spine beautifully lifted and tall, just like it was when we did those standing squats? Noticing that buttock is holding you, the abdominals are lifted, fantastic work. One more there. Beautiful work, really nice. So let's finish with a little stretch with the board and standing. So my last thing, I've got my feet apart. I'm gonna stand on an angle. Feet apart, hands on the ball. Just let me swirl through again. Soften your knees just so they're not locked. Round your spine like you're doing a cat stretch. Push the ball forward. As the ball goes past that point where you have to straighten, pause, lengthen through your arms, press back through your hips. Lift your head just a little so that you challenge that stiff part of the spine, the area between the shoulder blades. Stay there, think of pushing the ball forward and your hips back. Lift your waist, round your spine. Here you are in a cat stretch. And again, roll it forward, reach out. Give me a flat tabletop position as long as you can through your spine. Round. Beautiful, we just got one more. Reach it all the way away. Elongate, hips back, arms forwards. As long as you can make it. The last time, round your spine. Bring the ball in towards you. Coming back up to vertical. Just take a little sit on the ball just to finish with. Just rest your hands on your belly for a minute. Just let your shoulders relax, just let your spine feel really sort of elongated, head floating on the top. Just have a few gentle breaths into your belly, just sort of let your system settle down a little bit. Neck long, shoulders relaxed. Good, just as you're sitting there, just sort of feel how your pelvis is going down into the ball and your chest is lifting up, your neck is long. Just see if you can um, just slow your breath without making it deeper. Just let your shoulders fall out of your ears. And just breathe into the back of your ribs as well as the sides. Going to slow that breath down just a little bit more. Good. Keep it slow. Just see if you can get that slow, even breath. Shoulders are soft. Gentle movement in your belly. Very good. Okay, super troopers, I shall leave you with that for this afternoon. Very good, thank you so much for joining me. So I'm taking an afternoon off today. <laughs> so you won't see me later on, <laughs> but you will see me tomorrow. And it looks like probably for a few days next week as well. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. It was a treat to see you all as always. And um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Bye. Bye.